Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. The pettiness of some people just amazes me. In our first story, the OP's family ran into the landlady who takes the award of the most greedy and petty person. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. You want just like before? We'll give you just like before. For the past week, we've been renting a house in Puerto Rico for our winter vacation. Cheaper and more authentic of an experience than getting a hotel room. On our first day here, we met the owner of the property who gave us a tour of the place as well as some pointers and some advice on where to have a good time. She seemed pleasant, all was well. Immediately after the tour, we drove 20 minutes to the nearest market of walls, Walmart, to stock up on food and supplies. There was very little that wasn't bolted down, so we got loads of stuff. TP, shampoo, paper towels, cereal, beach toys, the works. This joint was going to be our home for a week. We wanted to get comfy. One of the few things that was already provided was about three quarters of a bottle of dish soap and a sponge. Over the course of the week, we ate a lot of food and therefore did a lot of dishes. The person responsible for washing dishes is pretty liberal with the dish soap, so by the end of the week there was maybe a quarter of the bottle left. Still plenty for the next guests. At least so we thought. We get to the last day and the owner arrives to inspect the property. Looked pretty good to us. Everything scrubbable or vacuumable was scrubbed or vacuumed. After all, we'd made sure of that. Just as clean as when we came, if not cleaner. She goes through every room, everything seems satisfactory, until we get to the kitchen. The fridge is clean, the pantry's clean, the sink is Hold on. Alert! Alert! Bad renter alert! Mobilize all units! DEFCON 2! The dish soap bottle's almost empty. It was nearly full when you came, she says. Well, yeah, we're humans and therefore require nourishment in the form of food and drink. Uh, yeah, we've been using it. Then you should have replenished it. When you rent a car, you refill the tank. Same thing applies here. Use something, replace it. Okay, I suppose that's a fair point, but one, it's not like the thing's empty. You could still get enough for five, maybe six washes of every plate, cup, and bowl in the house, about 20 in total. There's a good amount left. Two, and this one's important. Did she notice all the stuff we basically were gifting her? This list includes, and is by far not limited to, weak old boogie board, weak old sand toys, half a roll of paper towels, multiple rolls of TP, half full pack of water bottles, bar of hand soap, and much more. Meanwhile, this lady is complaining about $2 worth of dish soap. I'll be back after lunch. Make everything exactly like when you first arrived. Exactly like when we first arrived? Alrighty then. Some of the stuff we were basically gifting to her got squeezed into our already overfilled suitcases. The rest was put on the curb with a sign saying free and was picked up within half an hour. Meanwhile, one person makes the trip to Market of Walls and picks up the exact same brand and size of dish soap. About a fifth gets poured down the drain, the rest we put next to the sink. She returns and does a second run through. We can tell she noticed all the things we were planning to leave missing, though she makes no comment. We get to the kitchen, she proclaims the house satisfactory, we hand over the keys and drive home. She wanted original condition, she got original condition. And our second story. Real estate agent raises the price of house after we already paid our application fee. My girlfriend and I were looking for a place to live in a new city where she just accepted an internship that didn't pay but would hopefully open big opportunities in the future. I travel for work so it's easy for me to live anywhere. We looked and looked but there was nothing in our price range so we increased a few hundred dollars and finally found a house. It was a bit pricey for what it was, but we weren't finding any better places. The lease term was written as one or two years. We went ahead and submitted an application, which we were pretty confident about since we have good credit and my job pays pretty well. We specified that we wanted the one-year lease as our internship was only one year long. So a few days go by and we hear back from the agent. Our application was accepted, but the owner wants $150 more rent than was advertised per month. 
since we were only wanting to sign the one-year lease. I mentioned that it seemed unfair that she'd taken our $100 application fee before telling us about the price increase, but I kept it pretty civil since I didn't want to burn a bridge for the only viable option we had. She assured me condescendingly that this was perfectly legal and that the owner was entitled to it since he might have to go through the rental process again in a year and since the rental market was so tight, they could do whatever they wanted. And she was right. We had no other options, so I told her that I was sorry that I'd call her back after discussing with my girlfriend. We were so frustrated. The place was so expensive for what it was, especially considering the condition that it was in. It really was tiny. The bedrooms were about 10 by 10, which made me feel a little claustrophobic, and the walls were very dirty from the former tenants, who apparently had a couple big dogs living inside. There was literally dirt and grease smeared around the walls on the entire interior at about the height of a large dog. The yard was overgrown and trashed, but the lease stated that tenant would be responsible for all landscaping and even specified that we had to keep the lawn in good condition. The lawn was about two feet high, completely dead weeds. All this we convinced ourselves that we could deal with, scrub the walls and paint, get a lawnmower off Craigslist and pony up the water bill for resurrecting the lawn, be minimalistic with our possessions. Hopefully the new paint would take care of the lingering dog smell. We'd paid $50 for the application fee and now felt as if we'd been bait and switched, but had no other good options and our deadline was coming up fast. My girlfriend was crying and we both felt like homeless misfits that were terrible at life. I couldn't sleep in our hotel that night, but when I pulled up my bookmarked Craigslist housing searches, I saw something new. A place that looked nice and was about $500 cheaper than the house, actually inside our original price range. I cautioned myself that it was probably a scam, but sent an email anyways, and in the morning got a phone call from a nice old man. I set up an appointment and it was great, spacious, clean, and much cheaper. The landlord liked us and we signed a lease the same day. We felt so lucky and happy. We were still angry about the other house. The agent had taken our $100 and raised the price on us, probably because she knew how tight the rental market was in the area and that we may not have any other options. It had been just one day since she informed us about the $150 monthly price increase. I typed an angry email about how we were bait and switched, etc., but knew that it probably wouldn't get us our $100 back and that they would probably barely even read it. I asked my girlfriend if I should send it. She then came up with a brilliant plan for revenge. Do nothing. First, I deleted the email without sending it, and we moved into our new place. A few days went by and I got a text message from the agent of the other house asking if we were still interested. I replied that we were still very interested and that we'd gone on a trip but would be back in a week or so and would meet up to sign the lease then. She replied that since we were well qualified that we'd be fine as long as we were sure we wanted the place. So we started settling into our new place and enjoying ourselves. About 10 days later I received a call from the agent who seemed to have forgotten about us until then and she was frantic about getting the lease signed. I made up excuses. My girlfriend was very ill. We needed a few more days. We're still 100% interested and I'll call her on Monday to set up a meeting. On Monday, I typed up an email. Sorry, but we've decided not to move in after all. Thanks anyway. My girlfriend and I smiled nervously together as we shot the email off. The phone rang almost immediately. It was the agent. I exchanged glances with my girlfriend and answered it putting her on speakerphone. She was very upset that she hadn't shown her place for over two weeks and that her well-qualified tenants were dropping out. She pleaded with me to reconsider. What if I drop the price back to the original price in the ad? She asked with desperation heavy in her voice. Um, I pretended to think about it. I looked over at my girlfriend and she was silently laughing and hid her face in her arms, overcome with emotion. I could feel the tension on the line as the agent hung on my next words. Yeah. Sorry, no, I cheerfully declined. The agent was distraught. I hung up. My girlfriend's plan had worked perfectly. We felt avenged. Next time, maybe she'll think twice before bait and switching. And our last story. Entitled mom tries to fire the manager by saying she knows the manager. So a little backstory about the restaurant in Munich, Germany. 
It was a great restaurant, and my grandfather used to be the manager until he retired. He tends to get a lot of nice people, and he barely gets annoying or entitled people. He left a while ago and no longer works in the restaurant. I was working there as a waiter and would do the usual waiter stuff. I was like around 24 when I started helping in the restaurant, and then she comes. Everyone looks her way, and everyone starts whispering about the legend of Karen. Except they didn't. She just walked and nobody batted an eye. With her two bratty kids that looked like they could be from a Dr. Seuss book, they took a seat. They seemed nice. She placed her order, and her kids asked for some soda, and the parents had some beer. Nothing out of the ordinary. Until I gave some other kids some beer, too. They were over 16, and she immediately called me over. EM, excuse me. Did you just give those kids some drinks over there? Me. Well, yes, they are old enough to drink. EM. They clearly look like they're 16. Me. Well, yes, that's the drinking age. EM. Um, no, you R word. It's 21. Me. What do you mean? EM. The drinking age is 21, you dumb butt. Me. The law says he can at 16. EM. Since when? Me. Since it was written. It kept going back and forth until my grandfather came over. Grandfather. Excuse me, is there a problem? EM. This a-hole is being rude to my family. They won't let my kids drink like them. Gestures to the other table. Grandfather. Ma'am, they clearly are drinking age. EM. I know your manager. Grandfather. Oh, really? EM. Yeah, I'm going to call her right now. She then calls someone and pretends to talk to the manager. She closes it and faces my grandfather. EM, I just talked to him. You're fired. I can rehire you if you give us our meal for free. My grandfather starts to chuckle, and so do I. EM, do you think losing your job is so funny? Grandfather, still laughing. I'm the manager. We both start laughing hysterically as she gets all white and doesn't say anything. We tell her to go back to her meal, and she ends up paying for the entire meal. She left a bad review, but that was it. Karen's favorite words. I know the manager. I know the owner. And of course, assault. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.